About 10 years ago, Leaping Ma wrote her book called Knowing and Teaching Elementary Mathematics, and Roger Howe at Yale University read it, was very impressed with it, and wrote a review of it for the American Mathematical Society that enticed many US mathematicians to read it, and they were very impressed with her idea of the profound understanding of fundamental mathematics and how that was maybe the difference between elementary school teachers in China who had profound understanding of the fundamental mathematics they were teaching and elementary teachers in the United States who often didn't. So, uh, as Rick said, uh, I mean, this is in some sense, I guess, my dream conference. Um, I first learned about Chinese teachers from Li Ping Ma's book about 10 years ago now, and um, they were clearly pretty amazing creatures, and particularly they really knew their math. And to sort of start us off um, at getting a kind of a comparative view of, of U.S. classrooms and uh, Chinese classrooms, we're very lucky to have Li Ping Ma here who will tell us some things about that. And, and Confucius said he, her attitude toward knowledge, even though you, for those don't read Chinese, I want you to tell me what you see to silently appreciate a truth. Two is to learn continually, always learn. Never get tired, to never get tired of learning. You learn always. And the third one is teach other people. Um, keep teaching, teaching, <laughs> no, no ending. And so as we were putting together our work plan for the next three, few years, we had the idea of having this workshop on the professional development continuum in those two countries. And at that time, we heard about work that Janine was doing at, at the University of Pennsylvania. Right, so I received a small conference grant to uh, bring U.S. and Chinese teacher educators together to talk about teacher education in the two countries. And the, the importance of having the second meeting for my project was um, brought to the fore for me in a conversation that I had with a Chinese um, math educator in preparation for my meeting. Uh, we were talking about um, partici Chinese participants, and she said, you know that in China, teacher, we learn the mathematics in pre-service teacher education, but we learn to teach when we're teaching. We learn the pedagogy when we're teaching. So we, they see it as a continuum, and that in order for us to understand that, we needed to really have these two conferences, one focusing on the pre-service preparation and the other focusing on the, um, what goes on in practice. One of the things that uh, really caught my attention was the integration of the teaching itself and then the examination of your own practice and the reflection about your practice. These are all almost seamlessly woven together in China and I think that's valuable and efficient. So one of the points I wanted to make is through having this cross-cultural exchange and by looking at one another's practice, you, not, you do see things that you'd like to try, but you also start to reflect on your own practices. And so I think one of the reasons we're identifying all of the um, w perhaps limitations or problems in the United States is that by looking at another culture and set of practices um, I, um, that are part of that culture, it, it allows us to reflect very carefully on 
um, our culture and our practices and the assumptions underlying those practices. And so in that way, I feel like this exchange has been really very beneficial. Yes. But I, f I will say that the conversation, when we broke into small groups and the, at the very end, the U.S. participants and the Chinese participants met separately for about a half an hour and each group um, re reflected on learnings and questions they still had, the discussion amongst the U.S. participants was remarkably rich and um, it was really clear that each of the participants learned as much about themselves and their their own work as they did about the practices uh, in China and the way the way um, Chinese teachers view their work. Yeah, yeah let me add um, that uh, we saw some very uh, interesting models. Uh, we don't know how prevalent they are throughout China. Certainly they the people who spoke about them in their own communities certainly spoke, certainly made the case for that they're doing this systematically, but we don't know how prevalent they are in China. But we have to also recognize that uh, they are looking to us in many ways for things that we have, uh, that we do well. Uh, it would be really very nice if we had uh, professional development that was much more continuous, that was built into the system. Uh, that's a real advantage that they have, that their culture has uh, their education culture has built uh, professional development, regular, continuous, and public, uh, into the system that we don't have. Okay, we found that professional development in China is apparently uh, continual, collegial, and very public. And while the best professional development in the United States may have some or all of those characteristics, it is not common practice. And, and I'd like to add to the public um, perspective. Uh, I've learned that um, teaching, and perhaps much more than teaching in China, is a public endeavor. And um, it's very common for um, Chinese teachers to have many people in their classrooms, whether they're other teachers or um, pre-service teachers coming to to visit and observe them and the idea that uh, in the United States that you close your classroom door and you're the only one in your classroom um, is not something that is shared in in China that it's a very uh, the idea that people are always watching you teach and that part of what part of the work of teaching is talking with others and looking looking at practice and talking with others about your practice and having other people observe your practice and talk about it is um, something that's very different from the culture of teaching in the United States. We want to see if we can in fact have some sort of ongoing uh, uh, exchanges uh, with the people from China. One of the first things that was mentioned was that what we learned from the Chinese was that in the United States we don't honor the teaching profession as we should. And we see that partly as the responsibility of teachers as well as the rest of society. Uh, and by watching the video clips and discussion, uh, we are also impressed by um, the equality uh, between students and teachers um, in American schools and the emphasis on uh, teacher-student interaction and the uh, variety of activities uh, through which the lesson is conducted. Um, we understand that the focus um, in the uh, teacher preparation programs in China is more focused on content and less on pedagogy, but we would like more information about what aspects of the content and what the nature of the pedagogical um, uh, instruction is. And finally, um, we, because assessment plays such an important role in our country, and we know that you have some very important exams in yours, we would like to talk more about um, assessment, how you prepare students, 
whether you hold review sessions, how frequently um, one does that, how one does the formative assessment. Because Mm -hmm. uh, actually, in China, there are also two views. Uh, uh, one is put a pedagogical knowledge ahead of content knowledge, and the other one is the other way around. Um, but most uh, mathematic um, teachers are uh, coming from math departments, so they believe the latter, which is they put content knowledge before uh, pedagogical knowledge. We've talked about um, videotaping some Chinese and U.S. lessons, um, producing them with subtitles, and then g giving U.S. teachers and Chinese teachers opportunities separately to talk, to view the lessons, talk about the lessons, and then perhaps we can, at the conference in May or at another time, we can actually provide opportunities for U.S. teachers and Chinese teachers to analyze lessons together. So I see that as a very, um, concrete and rich um, next step that, that, that would not necessarily be part of or an extension of this meeting, but would be an activity that, that certainly out would grow out of the um, collaboration that was initiated through this right. meeting.